This is just a quick tip video that some people might find useful and others won't. That's the nature of a tip video. Now dash cams are powered by USB. That's a five volt power supply. Now that is usually supplied down a lead like this that plugs into your car lighter socket or accessory socket or whatever you want to call it. That converts the 12 volts in a car or 24 volts in a truck to the five volts and then sends it off to the dash cam. However, what do you do if you don't have an accessory socket in your vehicle? Well, there's an option you can put in a hardwire kit. Now a hardwire kit looks like this. Again, it converts the 12 or 24 volts down to the five volts the dash cam uses. But the other end of that, instead of plugging into your lighter socket, you usually wire it into your fuse box. Now, not everyone, is happy with the idea of doing that maybe it's a vehicle that's their work vehicle or it's a lease vehicle or something they don't really want to mess around with the fuse box they're just not happy about it well what do you do then there is a third option and that is that you can power your dash cam via your obd port your obd is your onboard diagnostics port it's in any vehicle made after about 1996 so last 20 years or so so you just plug that in it's usually under the driver's side out the other end comes the 5 volt USB. Again, it converts it. Notice here, input 8 to 36 volts, output 5 volts, 2.5 amp. 2.5 amp is plenty to power any dash cam that I've ever tested. Now, this is a mini USB plug. They also do a micro USB version. And by the way, the cable length on this one is 4 meters, which is approximately 13 feet long. So... The reason I've got this is that my car has the lighter socket, accessory socket, whatever, behind this part here which you think is quite neat, but when you try and plug anything into it, I've had to use the smallest adapter I can find with a right angle dongle on it, just so I can put it in there and partially close this train. As you can see, it still doesn't go all the way in. So it's a bit of a messy solution. So you can understand why I decided that I'd try something different. Now, like a lot of vehicles, the ignition in my vehicle turns on the accessory socket. As you can see here, the light's on when the ignition's on and it turns off when I turn the ignition off. And I wanted to see if the OBD port worked in the same way. So you can see, here's the port underneath my steering column, just behind this little flap here. So I'm plugging the wire into that with the light attached to the other end. You can see it goes on straight away. However, the ignition to the vehicle is off. So that means that the power to the OBD port is on while the ignition's off. I thought, well, let me find out if when I lock the vehicle up, maybe the power goes off then. But no, the power stays on. I left it for about half an hour, but the bulb remained lit. So I can safely say that the OBD port to my vehicle is continuously powered. So I got one of these. This is an inline power switch. So you can see I can just flick the switch on and off to turn the power on and off. And this has a male to female connector on there. So you can just put that in line with the cable that you've already got. And now I can switch the dash cam on and off whenever I want. Now, the advantage to this is that that means I can use one of those parking modes that are in dash cams. You know, when you park up and you want to leave the dash cam recording, even though the engine to the vehicle is switched off. I couldn't do that by powering it from my normal power supply. Of course, the downside is that you also have to remember to turn the thing on and off. Otherwise, you'll end up running the battery down completely if you leave it on for days. But, you know, there's always pros and cons with everything. Some people might find this idea useful, and that's why I'm showing it to you now. For me, it was all about hiding away these wires. Yes, I could have drilled holes in the car, things like that, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep things factory and stock, and therefore I went and picked one of these up. And it only cost a few quid as well, so why not? Now, if you think one of these would be useful to you, well, I've got links to the micro USB, the mini USB and the switch in the video description. And that link takes you to the store on eBay in China where I bought mine from. But he delivered them pretty quickly. I've got no complaints at all. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.